Better call the IRS because it's tax season. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I am playing Drena and Linvala, a Staxi Taxi deck that denies your opponent abilities and gives more abilities to you. Drena and Linvala combine some of these two creatures. Uh, this is a team up card from March of the Machine. And this has flying, vigilance, stops your opponent from activating abilities. And yes, that does include mana dorks tapping for mana and also takes the abilities of your opponent's creatures and gives them to this card. We have a lot of cards in this deck that either prevent both players from doing things like Soulless Jailer or Thalia. And we have things that are specifically beneficial to us like Captain Everheart or Tithe Taker. This is a very fun deck because it feels like Sometimes you're just going to steamroll your opponent by denying them certain types of cards while filling your own pockets with delicious treasure. I'm looking at you, smothering Tithe. This deck is very cool and really takes advantage of what Orzov does best, which is death, taxes, and of course, killing and exiling things because Orzov has really, really good removal. Uh, this deck does have some non-bows within it, so you do have to be careful about how you're playing your own cards. For example, we have things like Hushbringer. Hushbringer would stop the enter of the battlefield ability of certain other cards in this deck, like Skyclave Apparition. But if you're piloting this deck, you'll get familiar with the cards pretty quickly and you won't run into that as a problem for too long. So we're going to take Adrena and Linvala into the queue and make our opponent pay the two. Atraxa, Grand Unifier, and Pain in My Butt. Even though Atraxa has been out for about three months. This card has still not been moved to what I like to call the Hell Queue, where it should be matching up with the most powerful commanders. Instead, everybody is stuck playing against this 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven that draws a whole lot of cards when it enters the battlefield. Atraxa is hard to beat, but this deck is actually decently well positioned against it because we have multiple ways to prevent the enter the battlefield ability. Uh, in this hand, I don't happen to have any, but we have a lot of other cards that might be able to get us a good advantage. And while we're ramping and getting our way up there, we may as well make them discard. Under City Plunder, make them discard a card, and if they'd like, they can discard a second. If they don't, we get a random copy of a card from their deck. All right, they discarded Glorious Protector, so this is definitely an attracts a blink deck, but they gave us a copy of Noxious Gear Hulk. Ooh, big stinky. So this is definitely a blank deck. They put the Spirited Companion into their hand. They draw an extra card. They'll be able to draw even more cards because they'll be throwing that thing out. Well, I don't know if you have any Planeswalkers in your deck, but if you do, I'm going to make you pay mana to activate their loyalty abilities. This is not that impressive of a card. This is, this is a card, by the way, that should have seen sideboard play against things like Teferi. And unfortunately didn't. All right, Ravenous Chupacabra. There goes the Eidolon of Obstruction. Ouch. We could play Draenor and Linvala, but I think I'd rather set up my Elspeth Conqueror's death here. That is going to, on the first turn, exile something. On the second turn, it's going to tax non-creature spells. And on the third turn, it's going to reanimate from my graveyard. Uh, I can bring back Eidolon of Obstruction and make it a little bit bigger. This does have first strike, so having an extra plus one plus one counter on this seems pretty nice. Okay, Spirited Companion. Baron's swinging in. They've got treasure. We could be seeing a Trax the next turn. I kind of want to save Big Stinky. That's a Noxious Gear Hulk for the next turn. Anybody out here have activated abilities? No, all triggered abilities? That, that's fine. Oh, uh, they're turning Drana into a reprobate. We do have a fracture, so next turn I will be able to remove the reprobation. Oh, and just in time! I have a Takatli Honor Guard. Takatli Honor Guard uh, shorthand says, your tracks it doesn't do jank. I'm going to free Drena and Linvala and swing it in the air. Fracture is a piece of removal that I actually 
feel really has a home in historic brawl artifacts enchantments planeswalkers these are the three biggest threats i would say in this format because creature based decks tend not to be that strong um there are individual creatures that really carry things but for the most part these are the things you want to kill and doing it at instant speed for two mana it's very very nice um some of my biggest targets for this would be key to the archive because nobody likes key to the archive hmm looks like they're gonna have to be uh digging deep they are a blink deck and we turned off everybody's enter the battlefields including my own that's very notable. I've turned off my own Enter the Battlefield abilities. We've got the City's Blessings, so I'm going to draw. And I'll swing in here. I'll leave you guys back on the ground. They probably do have some ways to bounce this back into hand, even if it's not killing it right away. But I'm sure that they do have some non-Enter the Battlefield stuff. Ooh, okay. This does have an Enter the Battlefield ability, but it's also a 7-7 with reach. Um, that means it's going to be able to sit here and stop me from doing all that much with Drain and Laval. I can't attack in. Uh, Sarah Paragon doesn't have anything to bring back right now. Loran doesn't get an enter the battlefield trigger. Uh, it would be destroying this anyway. Curse of Silence! Ooh, okay. Let's make a Traxa cost more mana. Grand Unifier, please. Titan of Industry. Just blocking. Having a good time. What kind of stuff do you have in your hand? Oh, all creatures with Enter the Battlefield ability. Why wouldn't you play Uro? Uro is a three mana six six. The Kali Honor Guard is like actively kind of bad against Uro. You should play that Uro. Okay, they're scared. They're spooked. Oh, Ark of Arazka. Gonna keep drawing me cards for this stalemate. And I'm going to play Skrelv. I could also play Kambal here, but why I like Skrelv is because it lets me make Drana and Linvala unblockable by green creatures next turn. So I can keep swinging in for three. Yeah, the way Uro works is uh, it enters the battlefield and doesn't sacrifice. That's two Titan of Industries. That is a lot of damage on the board. The good news is they're both green. I'll pay one white. Target this. Say green. Swing in. These are both green. They cannot block. Deal a beautiful three damage. And rather than draw a card this turn, I'm just going to throw down Kambal. I can still draw a card, but I can do it at the uh, end of turn. Make it seem like I've got removal. I don't. Mmm. Okay, so they're all swinging in here. Um, We could hit them with a nice big block on one of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll go for the original. Go for the OG here. That way I'm keeping Takali Honor Guard alive. Taking seven. And we don't lose too much. Solemn Simulacrum, also an enter the battlefield card. Takali's like, nope, nope, nope. None of that for you. Mm, I did a bad job drinking there. I'm gonna grab the Sarah Paragon. Bring back Kambal. And I have my little happy Skrell here. Hello, yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't like losing the Sarah Paragon here, but I do think that it's a good block for this turn. But wait, are there blinks happening? Are there thinks happening? Kambal dies. 
And I'm drawing a card. I'm going to sacrifice this Mind Stone. I don't feel like I need this mana. Oh, hey, Mangara. And hi, Elish Norn. Uh, Elish Norn. This is the newest Elish Norn of the name Elish Norn. Um, Elish Norn is very cool because whenever a source deals combat damage, or sorry, any damage to me or my permanents, they lose life unless they pay the one. Uh, can be very, very punishing. I'm also going to throw my own Mangara the Diplomat in case they want to, I don't know, attack with two or more creatures or play two spells in a turn. I'll be punishing them by drawing a card. I can't really make anything truly unblockable here. Uh, I could do something like use Skrelv, name, I don't know, blue, and... Just swing in with the first striker. Oh, hey, Resto Angel. Restoration Angel is a 3-4 flyer. It doesn't do anything else. Still waiting on them to play that arrow. Oh, by the way, they dealt damage to me. Do you pay the one? They do pay the one. It's also very tempting to flip over Elish Norn. She turns into, like, a cool board wipe. As long as the Takali Honor Guard's alive, I'm... I'm kind of here for it. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. I, think I really want to. Yeah, I really want to. Uh, I'm going to sacrifice Kuneros, Thalia, and the Eidolon of Obstruction. So flip Elish Norn. Elish Norn is going to incubate two five times. Next turn, I'm going to give all my creatures plus one, plus one, and double strike. In a turn after that, destroy all non artifacts, non lands, and non Phyrexians. Seems good to me. Yes, it will blank this Takatli Honor Guard, but I think it'll be worth it. So very worth it. Um, let's go ahead and swing in. Damangara, you can go too. All of these are big enough to like get through Gaunti. I, I do want to leave Skrelv back. He's a Frexian and an artifact. And a little guy. And our opponent's given up on the game. Remember, Kali Honor card and Elish Norn and all of the other stomping enter the battlefield ability cards are good. As long as you're not hosing yourself, which like we hosed ourselves a little, but not a lot. Hurt them more than we hurt ourselves. We're up against Buchetta playing the Locust God. I have two mana and a couple of hate bears out here. We've got Tithe Taker, Cumball, Elish Norn, and of course our commander all ready to go. Oh, I guess I'll hold open Patriarch's Humiliation in case they play a creature worth silencing. I have to search for a Scanta, not a creature. So their planes, or uh, their commander is uh, quite good with her draw. Because whenever they draw a card, they make an insect. There's actually a two-card combo with Locust God. I believe it's called Sage of the Falls. Uh, it allows you to make as many insects that all have haste as you have cards in your deck. And you can choose not to at any time. Uh, it's pretty much a non-human has entered the battlefield. Do you want to draw a card? Yes, if you draw a card, another non-human enters the battlefield. And it just keeps going. So since our opponent is probably playing very few creatures and a lot of non-creature spells, we're going to get down Cumball, Console of Allocation, to try and drain all their life. Very Mastermind. Well, there was a creature. They chose not to keep that on top. They're going to draw two cards off Wizard Class. They have no maximum hand size off this as well. And I guess we'll get Adrenaline Ball out. This doesn't have an activated ability beyond the draw and discard a card, but there are plenty of other cards here. Ooh, Malevolent Hermit that do have activated abilities. Not that I'd be able to do much about it. Malevolent Hermit came out. I mean, I guess I could sacrifice Drenna and Linvala to counter a spell. Oh, no! 
Teferi. Ooh, Teferi. So my game plan here, I'm going to take out this Teferi as best as I can. And I'm going to try to hit them with Thought Distortion. Everybody at Teferi. If they phase out one of these, he's dead. And if they plus, uh, also dead. I guess the spirit didn't really need to go at him, but we'll call this revenge for all the Teferi things they've done. Oh, nice. More spells-based tokens. Third path, Iconoclast. Whenever they cast non-creature spells, get soldiers. And they've already managed to flip Search for Iskanta. Hello, Locust God. A brainstorm. They're going to draw three cards, which means making three little bugga bugs. One little, two little, three little bugga bugs. Bug, bug, bug. Elish Norn would be stopping their combo, by the way, since uh, creatures entering the battlefield would not trigger their abilities. Let's see what they have, though. Any cards in hand? Any smelly spellies? Many smelly spellies. Um, if I attack in with Elish Norn, they could quadruple block me. So I guess I'll just let that through. Looks like they had wash away, negate, and a braid in hand. Oh, and another Teferi. Uh, Teferi Temporal Pilgrim. Good, that thing's scary. I don't want to think about it. This is going to let them draw extra cards. And if they bring wizard class up to level three, now whenever they draw cards, they can put counters on things. Uh, Elish Norn? Excellent! I'm going to attack in with this Elish Norn. Um, if they deal damage to any of my permanents, they have to pay the one. Or they lose two life. I actually kind of want the Locust God to be not dead when we hit it with Patriot's Humiliation because I want it to just not have text. Ooh, it's Kanta. All right, I'm gonna go try and bop the Locust God here. Cool, it died. I noticed that they have one card in hand. It was like, chances of it being a counterspell? Not huge. Is Kanta its ability to get a counterspell? Pretty big. Bug, 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 bug. So many little tiny bug -a bug -a bugs. Hail's End! That can counter legends, like this one. They have enough mana to bring back Malevolent Hermit, but it looks like they would rather hold things back. I'm gonna play Relic of Legends. And I'm going to attack in with Elish Norn. Oh, and uh, Elish Norn. See if they pay the ones. Yes, if I activate this Elish Norn, I would be sacrificing creatures and then getting all of this countered. It would be bad. I think what I can do, though, is I can try to get them to counter this Liliana instead, or I can just pass through the turn. But since I've got all this mana, I'm going to go for the uh, the Liliana. Tap. Tap. Tail's End? Great. They lose another two life. Thanks, Mama. Thanks, Mama. The bug gets bigger. The bigger bug. Locust God's out. Oh, mommy, Elish Norn. We have managed to assemble Norntron. We have Elish Norn, Elish Norn, Mother of Machines, and Elish Norn, Grand Cenobite. And our opponent is having absolutely none of it. Zero of it. They are just sick and tired of Elish Norn. Well, so is Whispers of the Coast. That's why they killed her. GG. More legendary team ups Thalia and the Gitrog monster. I also have a Thalion Gitrog monster deck. You should absolutely check out the video for it. And mine was built as a bit of an aristocrats deck, but what will theirs be? I have no idea. One of the biggest problems I had while building Thalion Gitrog monster is I couldn't decide how I wanted to build the deck. So we're going to see how they built theirs. And I'm going to make it harder for them to cast their commander. Thalia and Gitrog monster now costs two more. Thanks to Curse of Silence. Oh, you know, I probably should have played the, the uh, white mana, gotten Tomic out. I was just thinking, oh, I should get a variety of lands down. Not, I should play that so I have more mana off of Relic of Legends. And also a 
that also stops plans from coming back from graveyards. Which is probably something relevant for them. Hi, Elvis Rejuvenator. You're very sacrificable. I love that about you. Kunaros! Hound of Atreos! This doggy has Vigilance, Menace, Lifelink, and stops creatures from coming back from the graveyard. You also can't cast spells from graveyards. That's right. You leave these graveyards alone. Maybe. I don't I don't actually know if you're like a lands deck or if you're just playing creature. This this ramps, but like being in green. Ramp makes sense. Raids, okay. So this looks like it's gonna be aristocrats. They sacrifice the Elvish Rejuvenator, and I'm going to not. You draw a card and gain some life. Looking good. I'll attack in with Kunaros. Menace means we're getting through. Play the Relic of Legends. Use it for Tomic. And then pass the end of the turn. I have two mana here, so I can still use Swords to Plasters if I want to take out Braids or any other creatures that they happen to play. Ooh, Oracle of Moldiah. No lands on top of the deck. Thank goodness. You can still play an extra land. <gasps> A land! I wonder if they'll choose to sacrifice a land. Ooh, no, they're offering me a trade. I'll take a trade. I'll let that oracle live for another turn. Oh, and now I get Herald of Vengeance. Hi, Herald. I'm still trying to decide if I want to exile this. I think I'll go for it. Uh, I know what they have on top of their deck. It is um, nice single target removal, and they'll probably use it on either my commander or on Tomic. They don't need to use it on Tomic. They got Elspeth's Nightmare. Oh, he's having a horrible day. Yeah. Exile. They have more exile in hand, too. That's all right. Red and Lavala return to the battlefield. I do not have any non-creature, non-land cards in my hand, but I do have a little bamboozling angel, Herald of Vengeance. I feel like Herald of Vengeance is one of those cards that could exist in paper, but without digital tracking, it gets a little bit harder because it's reliant on the memory of the people playing. I, I do think that if they put this into Commander, it would be pretty fine. Oh, Vraska Relic Seeker. Destroying my commander. Makes sense. Tear Asunder, making the Curse of Silence go away so Thalion Gitrog Monster can finally come into play. My commander's getting very expensive. Very very expensive. But yeah, she's worth it. She's worth eight, eight mana. I was going to wonder if they would mine us again. Nope, but here's Thalion Gitrog. They do have three mana. Will Drenna and Linvala survive? I'm kind of scared. Please, let them live. Or give me some cool abilities. Oh, Crucible of Worlds! So Crucible of Worlds is out after Tomic is gone. Yeah, that's legit. Uh, we use Drenin Linvala to hit Braska, so she can't use her minus ability. And we're gonna get out Shuldred, the Apocalypse, and Strict Proctor! They both come in tapped, by the way. That's just Thalion Gitrog doing Thalion Gitrog stuff. Also, this has First Strike and Death Touch when it attacks. They have to sacrifice something, either a creature or a land. Not a very high tax to pay, though, because they get to draw a card when that happens. Also, they can spit out extra pirates every turn. The card draw will hurt them a little bit off Shuldred, but I want them to attack in. This thing works just fine as a blocker. I want them to attack in so I can kill with Herald of Vengeance. Deal me damage. Thalion, Gitrog monster. I dares ya. 
Oh, um, okay. Sure, I'll grab something with a basic land type. I have those. I'll grab this snow land that comes in tapped. And it will come in double tapped because of Valiant Gitrog monster. Oh, um, this attacking in means that I would be destroying all permanents with the same name. So that would include both these pirates, wouldn't it? Oh, by the way, uh, the cruelest thing that this can do, see how it doesn't say each non-land permanent? If your opponent animates a forest with Nyssa and hits you with a forest and then you play this, it does destroy all of their forests. Yeah. Just, just pointing it out. Just pointing it out. Let's kill some creatures. Pay the two. Yes, that's the card. Um, I can't kill both of these, but I think that Vraska is the uh, the bigger threat here. So I'm gonna swing four at Vraska and four at Nissa. Hi, yes, strict Proctor taxes abilities. It doesn't completely stop them. Sometimes you just have to, uh, be aware of your own weird cards. Animate it. Let me tap Dren and Linvala for mana. He took Massacre. Oh, you have to pay the extra two. That's what you were doing. Very smart. All my creatures are dead. Our opponent clearly knows what's up. Drain on the ball costs way too much mana. Uh, I'm going to use Castle Lockwain. Draw a card. It's discounted by one. And here comes Black Market Connections. They're now getting that sweet, sweet loyalty. And they'll be able to use this to reanimate soon. There's not that many creatures in their graveyard, though. Just Elvish Rejuvenator and Braids. Boop. Thanks, Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Uh, yep. Six life is always the way. I'm going to exile this. And play Soulless Jailer. And draw another card. I love paying life to draw stuff. Oh. So already, with Soulless Jailer out, they wouldn't be able to um, reanimate. But now, they can't use the abilities at all. I included Planar Disruption in this because it's a two mana arrest kind of spell that still lets me use abilities from Drain and Linvala. Sally and Gitrog getting rather costly. Hmm. I don't feel like I need the treasure. So I'm going to pay five instead of six. I'm going to put a little plus on Captain Everhart. Some of this. Some of you. I don't feel like I need to pay to life. I use Ark of Araska. Ah, more land. Great. I sit here and I wait. Our commanders will die so many times. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I, uh, sorry. Sorry to disappoint you. It's a land. I can double block this. It has menace. Ooh, 
Ooh, making my double block considerably worse. Also making it so Kaya pretty much just is dead. No matter what here. I can't double block that and also block Thalia and Gitrog monster. But that's all right. I feel like this did a lot of work. Hmm. Do I want to do the 12? I'm just going to draw a card. Even though I really want to do all of them. only have so much life I say using up that life to do silly things braces on we know about that four know about that three I have to like not be dead damn death death's oasis that is a very unusual card um, Death's Oasis is like a, a way to bring back other cards, right? Yeah. Wild. Cool, though. Like a reverse food chain for your graveyard. Valiant and Gitrog hit me. Four! I'm running out of life to give. And yet, I need more. Ooh, one mana arcane signet. One mana for one mana? What a deal! So they can block with Hive of the Eye Tyrant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What do we got? Yes. Uh, white. Go to combat. I'm gonna swing in with just the shapeshifter. If they play any creatures, they will end up tapped. And also, I'll gain a life. Would you like to sacrifice this to gain life? Yep, cool. Um, they gain four because of Thalia and Gitrog. I like permanent cards in graveyards can't enter battlefields. Thanks, Soulless Jailer. I'm gonna munch a land. I'm gonna do a chump block with the Esper Sentinel. I have three first striking damage. I feel like actually the Captain Everheart, because it goes back into my hand, is fine too. Do I want to pay one or do I want to pay two? I love how high Nissa, Nissa's loyalty is. <gasps> one on the snow! You pay the one. They pay the one. Everybody's dead. Ow. Rude. Meat Hook Massacre. They didn't have any creatures to bring back. <gasps> Luris! Thank you for getting me a life. Uh, I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw. Excellent. Be gone, Lurus. <laughs> and hello, Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Lovely to see you. Uh, I'm going to play Captain Everheart. And I can create a blocker using Castle Art Veil. But then I think I would die because a creature died. Oh. That's a really expensive frog. Thank you for getting me life. I think I was dead to Hive of the Eye Tyrant. This is fine. Blood on the snow. I think I have to go for treasure, but I'm always going to roll greed. 
No. Yes. No. Yes. Don't do it. Don't. Mm. At least I'm honest with myself, right? Right? I don't believe I have a way to create enough blockers to survive. I think I have to attack in. Use blood on the snow. Mildred, you could gain me life, couldn't you? I'm like eyeing this Kaya. Kaya can't stop that land from coming in, though. Gotta be a creature. I go to one. I reveal this. Mm hmm. Go gophers. Gophers in my throat? I can pay two to gain two. I think we're out. I think we're out of options. If I get two mana removal for that land once it's animated, it would do something. It's not gonna be enough. We draw. We die. We go out in a blaze of beautiful glory. What a good game. Slimefoot and Squee. This is a commander deck that was actually brought into Arena. This this card was given away at pre-releases, if I remember right. And it's a reanimation deck that's also a bit of a Saprolings deck. And it has our good friends Slimefoot and Squee. I like that we both have our team ups here. Well, we have a way to stop cards from leaving graveyards. A soulless jailer. So maybe we can make them rely more on just having things enter the battlefield. By the way, this is only creatures entering the battlefield that does not stop the Lotus Cobra. I'm still gonna play it! Boom! There's a Takatli Honor Guard. She's just like, hey, got creatures entering the battlefield? Because whenever this enters the battlefield or attacks, they get a sapling. Oh, my Chainer! Chainer also lets them bring things back from the graveyard. I would like you to not be able to do that. So I'm going to ask if I can exile you. Yes, I can. Great. And I'll sit here and stare at you with my honor guard, arms crossed. Lotus Crub is just sitting there, hissing, thinking about mana. Ooh, there's uh, three mana. One floating. Looks like they're not doing anything with it. Play the Tithe Taker. Make spells cast during their turn. Cost one more. And I'm just kind of waiting on a fourth land. I would love to be able to play Drain and Linvala. Activated abilities don't really have them. But Drain and Linvala would stop the activated ability of Slimefoot and Squeak. Oh, so it looks like they're actually doing a sacrifice build here. I say that because that's a Corvold. Corvold gets bigger whenever they sacrifice permanence and draws them a card. So Fabled Passage going to the graveyard means card draw for them. Notably, they did not have to sacrifice something when it entered the battlefield because there was no enter the battlefield effect. Concealed Courtyard comes in a little tapped. And here's Soulless Jailer. Just going to sit back here and watch. Just lands in the graveyard for now. I need one more mana so I can exile Corvold. <laughs> because Corvold is kind of scary. All right, wow. Uh, Takali Honor Guard has been killed. Slimefoot and Squee comes in and they get a Saffroling, which may just be consumed. A delicious snack. Nope, they ate the land instead. Mmm, a delicious snack. What? What you looking at? 
I see three mana. And I see five mana for me. Elspeth conquers death. Gonna exile that Corvold. They can sacrifice their Mind Stone. Because I wanted to draw an extra card there. We have more uh, exile. Almost all of the uh, the removal that costs like five in this deck is exiling removal. Our lower cost removal is usually destroy. And taking things out and making sure they can't come back from the graveyard is pretty big. All right, Cruelty of Gix. There goes either Kaya or Sarah's Emissary. It would be very cool for them to hit Sarah's Emissary because then they could reanimate it, uh, bringing it back from a graveyard. All right, I'll block. I guess that doesn't work, though, because of Soulless Jailer. Permanents can't enter the battlefield from graveyards. Until they use Heartless Act. Hmm. I'm going to make them sacrifice Slimefoot and Squay. And I'm going to fracture the Cruelty of Gix. I will get to bring back my Kaya before they can do anything else. Thanks, Elspeth Knocker's death. I thought that they were going to have a way to remove this. They did not. They did leave their commander in the graveyard. Yep. That way they can bring it back from the graveyard. I'll bring back Kaya. Well, I won't. Because of Solus Jailer. That's fine. Sarah Paragon, same thing. I, uh... Can't have these leaving the graveyard. I mentioned before, sometimes you nombo yourself. Lotus Cobra getting mana. And Slimefoot and Squeeze just kind of trapped here. They can't bring back Squee and another card because Squee is stuck. Until they get rid of the Soulless Jailer. They had an opportunity. This is a reanimate deck. They kill Drana and Linvala. We'll bring it back. And seven mana means it's time for Sarah's Emissary. Oh, an Infernal Grasp. I think they know what I'm going to be naming. Instant. So in a lot of cases, I would be naming creatures. Um, I'm naming Instant because this is a Jun deck, and I feel like a lot of their removal is going to be Instants. There's also some creatures that are pretty scary, but I like protection from Instants here. Here comes Drana. And we're going to swing in for seven. No flyers here. Ah, Lanor Elf. And you see how they have like one card in hand? Let's find out what it is. Thought Distortion! Oh, wait, I didn't actually get to see what it was. Uh. It was. This Rise of the Dark Realms. By the way, uh, Drana and Linvala can now tap for green mana, and Lanor Elf cannot tap for green mana. Welcome to taxes and stacks and pillow forts and all of the horrible things we do with our cards. I'm very glad I got rid of that uh, Rise of the Dark Realms, though. That brings back all creatures in all graveyards. But it's not going to be happening today because we're just going to win in the air. Detry is playing Yerik the Desecrated. Something who likes to double the Enter the Battlefield abilities. Now, I could actually mulligan this hand to try and find something that stops Enter the Battlefield abilities, but that sounds really mean, and I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm just going to keep this hand because it has playable cards and take a look at their hand. What you got? Turn one Thoughtsy is always a rude thing to do. They've got Ramp, and they've got a Blinker. I'm going to take out the repeatable Blinker, Thassa Deep Dwelling, and let them keep Signet, Omen, and all the lands that they have in hand. 
Tithe Taker. Take it so if they want to cast things or activate abilities during my turn, it's going to cost a little more. That's relevant for you, Omen of the Sea. If they want to cast that on my turn, they will have to pay more mana. If they pass through end step without casting it, then I'll know that they goofed up. They could also just ramp. Arcane Signet's pretty great. Now it's time for some taxes. Curse of Silence. We're going to make it so Yerik costs two more to cast. So I'm recording this on a very nice rainy day, by the way, and the rain just picked up. It smells so nice outside. I've definitely got got gotten by Tithe Taker before. One of the weirdest interactions with Tithe Takers is because it also hits abilities. If your opponent, say, plays the Wandering Emperor and then activates it, it costs one more to play if they're playing it on your turn and costs one more to activate. Uh, so it's a double taxing effect there. I only have one white mana right now, so I can't play Drain on Linvala or Elish Norn. I'll just throw down the Eidolon of Obstruction, speaking of taxing abilities. This taxes Planeswalker abilities. They've got a late Yara Mirror Lake that we know about. That's just a land that comes in tapped. They have five mana, but they can't play their commander. Thanks, Curse of Silence. Gallagher Eaters. How you doing, Gallagher Eaters? Got three mana left. They won't be able to sacrifice this on my turn, though, because of that ability tax. And nice, I found another white mana for next turn. I'm also just going to swing in here. If they'd like to trade, they can. I just don't think they will. Looking good. All right, so we've got them down to 13. Laying down the beats with our little hate bears. Greeters might need to gain some life soon. Ooh, Nissa of Shadowed Bows. Lands entering the battlefield give her loyalty. She can also untap lands and attack with them. They've got two mana. They've plussed her. And they will be able to reanimate Thassa next turn if we don't hit her. But I did just draw a Hushbringer. I'm gonna still attack Nyssa. And a hush falls over the crowd. There are no enter the battlefield abilities for any creatures. Lands still trigger Nissa though. She could, she could still use lands. Hushbringer, a rude card against Yarek. It's um, it's great. Turn Timber Symbiosis. They're gonna look at the top seven cards that are deck, and if there's a creature among them, they can grab it and put it onto the battlefield. It's Incubation Druid. This taps for three mana because it has a plus one plus one counter on it, and they've got well. Nothing else to do. They didn't have any lands. Uh, they didn't want to pay the one to activate Nissa's ability. Works for me. We're going to play Arcane Signet and Elish Norn. This is the Elish Norn, which can um, drain your opponent out and transform into the Argent Etchings, which is a big Phyrexian bomb. It's kind of cool. Mostly, though, makes our opponent pay mana unless they want to lose life whenever they deal damage to my things. There are no triggers. There are no triggers. Even things dying don't trigger. But they have lots and lots of mana. They can finally afford to play Yarek because we did tax them up to seven mana using Curse of Silence. All right, so they're using Nyssa, untapping a land. They did pay the one.
Would you like to attack? I do have a 3-5. A vigilant 3-5. If they attack in, I probably won't be blocking. Oh, okay. They just tapped it for mana. One. Three. What's happening? What are you, what are you casting? Oh, Yarrick. Hi, Yarrick. Um, I can sacrifice this to draw a card. I'm actually down with that. I don't feel like I need to be taxing Yarrick since I have a Hushbringer on the battlefield. Yurik will still be doubling the uh, enter the battlefield triggers of lands for Nyssa. So she will be getting double loyalty off landfall with Yarrick in play. This only stops creatures. Well, hey, Tomek. Lands on a battlefield and land cards in a graveyard can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponent control. That means Nyssa's plus doesn't work so well. Wait a minute. Oh my god, you have to target a land. <clears throat> so, hey. I'm Tomek. And I'll be a big jerk today. I do have enough mana and enough creatures if I wanted to sacrifice a bunch of them to flip over Elish Norn and turn her into a saga. We also have uh, Drana and Linvala, who's able to steal some of these activated abilities like Incubation Druid, tapping for mana. We also have Linvala, who does half of that. I, I love how it's like, yeah, we have Linvala, but what about second Linvala? It, it has just the same ability, but more. It's super strong. Ooh, nice evolving wilds. They can still get lands out of their graveyard, or uh, out of their deck, just not in their graveyard. A land arrives. It is an island! Nissa gets twice the loyalty. Yarrick is still doing work. And they can minus five. This will give them Thassa. If they want it. Oh, and it will even draw them no cards because that's a creature entering the battlefield. Actually, it wouldn't be entering the battlefield as a creature would be an enchantment anyway. If they have a creature in their hand, they could also grab that. But blinking doesn't feel very good here. I, th I think the thing they can do by blinking is they can attack in with Yarrick and then blink it so they can use it, use it as a blocker. Because I would need to triple block to take it out since I'm not sacrificing Elish Norn. Okay, um, here comes Drena and Linvala. Uh, they can also use the tap ability of Thassa, but they have to do it before this enters the battlefield, because they only have three mana until this enters. Okay, so they're smart. They know what's up. You can't tap both my flyers, though, so I am absolutely going to slam into Nissa and take her off the board. Who's getting tapped? Is it Tomek? Tomek is sideways. Hushbringer's swinging in. We have dealt the one. I... Oh my god. I apparently can adapt Drena and Linvala. Huh. I mean... If I could generate green... Oh, here's a weird one. If Drena and Linvala gains the text here, adapting three, does that change her color identity to include green? Hmm. I can spend mana of any of any color for this ability, but I'm wondering if I could tap this for green. The answer is no, but I figured it would be worth checking. Um, all right, so they want to tap down Drana and Linvala. I kind of want to adapt and then tap, but I don't need to, so I won't. Boop. It's not on the card, it's just absorbing the ability. That would make sense. Uh, I could go through a Thought Distortion here, or we could just play Linvala, 
and hold up our Teferi's Protection. I think holding up the Teferi's Protection is a good idea for this turn. That's what I'll do, and I'm going to swing in with Tomic and the Hushbringer. Elish Norn, though, is, is itching to transform here. I mean, I don't need Linvala and Draina and Linvala. She taps. Hmm. Nice enchantments you have there. And, um, nice artifacts, too. Sure would be a shame if I exiled them. I'll hit the graveyards as well. Just for good measure. They could have counter spells. They are in blue! Negate. All right. That's very fair, but it means that they didn't have any mana to tap down more things. So boop, boop, boop. You are approaching death. They have four life remaining. They can gain some life by attacking with Yarrick. Very hard for an enter the battlefield deck to um, go up against these. Good game, Yarrick. You got hushed. Tyvar Kel, the Himbo Elf. Um, I have lots of good cards to play here, including some nice early moves like Gold Steel Heart. What I expect to see from the Tyvar Kel deck is a lot of creatures that tap for mana. This Tyvar Kel makes it so all elves have tap and add black, which means that if we get Drena and Linvala out on the battlefield, none of them will be able to tap for any color of mana. And also, we will be able to tap our creatures for mana. It's great. It's good for us. So we're starting out strong with an Esper Sentinel. This is just a really good way to draw cards for our opponent playing non-creature spells, which they did. I'm gonna play Cold Steel Heart, name White on that, uh, get myself lined up for a bit more mana. And their Ranger class has a ow on the battlefield. Glissa. Glissa is in fact an elf. She's a zombie Phyrexia. Phyrexian Elf, right? Yeah, Zombie Phyrexian Elf. There's a lot going on on her. And she's also really scary. And I don't... I don't want to have her attack me. So I'm going to exile her. <laughs> I think I'm correct to be scared of Glissa. I have a Glissa deck. I know what she does. Ooh. Herald unites the elves. They could not pay the one. They mill themselves and they're going to bring back either an elf or Tyvar. All right, so they have a Gwenna. That's a good elf. She taps for lots of mana and she gets bigger when they cast big creatures. But she also only has three toughness. So Oath of Kaya, bops her, and there's no longer anything to worry about. Um, also, there's no elves to get plus one, plus one counters here. And just in case... They have some fancy pantsy elf with an enter the battlefield ability. That's not going to be triggering either because I'm using Takatli Honor Guard to stop creatures entering the battlefield from triggering abilities. Frailies, hello. They cannot pay the one. This Frailies is the arena only Frailies. Uh, she seeks elves, so puts a random elf from your deck into your hand and untap elves and makes regal forces. But we have locked our opponent out very, very quickly. We also have board wipes in our hand, single target removal, and of course, Draina and Linfala. Good game, Tyvar. Our opponent is going to be drawing lots of cards because Kesa will be draining me whenever they do. Uh, Kesa is kind of scary because she has not one, but two one card combos in her colors in Arena. Uh, that means that it's very easy for them to get out their commander, protect their commander, and stop my game plan using counter spells and kill spells and then hit that combo. Um, this combos with Pure into the Abyss and Lich's Mastery. Hopefully though, we'll be able to keep up and take out our opponent. We've got Eidolon of Obstruction out. 
It'll make their planeswalkers cost a little bit more to activate. And authority of the consoles, which will make their creatures come in tapped. Also gave me life. I like the life game part. It's good. Swing it in for two. Hello there, Mind Stone. They're ramping. And I'm playing my commander. Drana and Linvala. Didn't get countered. They did have two mana up. I think they're going to remove it. Okay. Towards the plowshares. I gained three life. We'll have to bring you back soon. Staff of Completion. This can draw cards. It can proliferate. And it can not technically sacrifice things. I'm going to play Elspeth Conquers Death. Take this out. Reduce the amount of ramp that they have. Oh, and a Vanishing Verse! I'm never going to get to Chapter 3 of this. Wow, they paid a lot of life to draw a card there. That's okay. I've done that too. Uh, sometimes you just want to get that card advantage. 15 life remain, though. I'm at 28. Yay, because they made me gain 3. Usun Zenith, they're drawing three cards. Wow, you don't you didn't even get Kesa out first. You're just like, yeah, let's draw cards. We'll see how many of those I can make you discard. Plot Distortion hits all of them except for a planes. Maybe you should play more creatures in your deck. Just saying, it would have helped. Oh, I see our opponent is into certain online activities as they put on their robe and wizard hat. I'm gonna keep this hand. They're playing Nissa of Shadowed Bows. This is a landfall commander that either cheats out cards from your hand or from your graveyard. Um, this can be very, very strong and has a lot of cool interplay with land-based ramp, which also just lets you play those big, cool creatures anyway. All right, Nissa Shadowed Bows, what you got? Because I've got a Thalia, which makes your commander cost one more. If you happen to have any artifacts or enchantments, I can destroy them. And if you've got some sort of idea about reanimating things, no, 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 I have a guard dog to guard that graveyard. Boop. Looking good. Goblet Shrine. Comes in tap. Bajookabog. There's nothing to exile. Thalia, the taxes begin. We have the death. We have the taxes. And soon we will have all of the staxes. Tangled Border Hedron. This taps for mana. It's also really cute, and I like looking at it. I'll swing in with Thalia. We got first strike. Probably don't want to block. Probably Kunaros. Kunaros uh, has menace, vigilance, lifelink, so I get a good swing on most turns with this card. Uh, got a good amount of evasion, but also stops graveyard stuff from happening. Hi, Toski. Toski wins in a fight against Thalia because it's indestructible. Play Mural. Swing in with Kunaros. Gain some life. Mural is going to stop them from activating abilities or casting spells on my turn. Uh, also, when they attack in, Mural gives me loads of little dudes. A cute squirrel. Toski does have to attack, so if they don't have removal for Kunaros here, I get to. Gain life! And life gain is good. Elder Gargaroth. That's a big boy. That thing does uh, stuff when it attacks. It does stuff when it blocks. Generally very, very scary. And I don't have a good way to deal with it other than maybe double blocking. I'm going to attack in with Kunaros again because... Menace. This thing has gained me nine life so far and dealt six damage. Uh, if they attack in with Elder Gargaroth, I think I'm double blocking with Miral and uh, Drena and Linvala, unless it feels like they've got some sort of a trick. Ah, Vorinclex gets two forests into hand. Uh, they cannot tap Tangled Torahedron for mana as long as this is out, uh, but I can tap um, this. Cool. By the way, Vorinclex has reach. Elder Gargaroth people have learned the lesson of this has reach. Vorinclex has reach. I've had multiple drafts where people have attacked into this Vorinclex with flyers. I could attack into it too. 
but I would use Skrull first. Uh, I'm going to pay one white. Give Kunaros fake protection from green. So I can swing in. Gain another three. And I'm going to follow up with Tithe Taker. I like how I've apparently also disabled Vorinclex from flipping over. And if I generate eight mana, I can transform Drin and Linvala transform. I don't have, this doesn't have a transformation. That won't do anything. <laughs> the landfall commences. Um, if they want to, they could minus five to bring out something of one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, or less mana value from their hand. I don't think they will. Any attackers? Okay, just this one. Uh, I'm gonna gain more life. And then I'm going to actually use the mana from Draena and Linvala to draw a card. Why? It's funny! I'll use this plunder from down under too. They either discard two. Oh, graveyard trespasser. Uh, yup. How scared am I of this Drana? I'm really not at all because we have Quinaros on the battlefield. What a good dog. Down to 11, up to 44. I can't use Castle Lockway in this turn, though, because I uh, don't have enough black mana. I'd use it for my plunder. What oh, no, oh boy. Everybody pat the dog. Pat, 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 pat. Pat, pat. Pat, 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 pat. <gasps> Uh-oh. There goes my land. Castle Lock Twain, my dog, and poor sweet Skrelv all gone in one fell swoop. Nissa can now reanimate. The only card they have to reanimate is Graveyard Trespasser, but that's still a pretty good card. Uh, Vorinclex and Gargaroth, are they both coming in? Nope, just Gargaroth. They get to either make a beast, gain three life, or draw a card. Wow, they gained life. Not what I expected. I will double block there, and I'm going to also block with Toski. Or, uh, block the Toski. Uh, they can choose to kill one of the two of these. And this way I'm just preventing them from drawing a card. Uh, when they hit me. They killed Mural. Curse you, Reach. Do you bring back the Gargaroth bigger and badder? Must exile. Stop asking if you want to be exiled. Just gonna pass back to them for now. I have a potential triple block if they go in with Boring Clex. It's not great, but at least it's something. And I have Swords to Plowshare to take out uh, the XL Gargaroth. I could use that on Toski, but I just want to make sure that that thing's not there. There is no Elder Gargaroth. Ooh, Boring Clex is swinging in. Uh, oh, baby, it's a triple. They will still draw a card, right? No, I have exactly uh, six toughness between these. They will draw a card off Toski. Move my commander back to the command zone. And a titan of industry. Gonna get some shields and rhinos. Sylvan Ranger also gets them a basic land. Nice. With a completely open board here, it's pretty much board wipe or bust for me. If I get to farewell off the top, that would be amazing. Blood on the Snow wouldn't take out Toski, but would still be pretty good. Especially with all the snow mana I've got. So that's a land. And I have a lot of life to spare, but I'm not going to be able to race against their card advantage off Toski. Okay. 
I've got two board wipes in this deck. I feel like you could actually run more in a deck like this and build it with more planeswalkers and a bit more control. It's not my vibe. Uh, I will block Toski. That are drawing two cards. Do you have any artifacts? Perhaps enchantments you'd like to play? No? I'm gonna play Loran anyway. At least use it to start drawing cards for myself next turn. I'm not attacking in. As much as it would be fun to pop the shield counter on Titan of Industry, doesn't feel like it's gonna be enough. Yeah, I'm tapping for green! Let's go! My commander is dead and costs eight mana! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh! Oh, worm! I'm not dead this turn, but I think I'm dead next turn. There's a lot of damage coming in here, and a lot of card draw, and a lot of worm stuff. Worm stuff. Animated that Bajuka Bog, too. One, two, three, four, five, six cards drawn. Farewell off the top. Any farewells? Any adioses? Any sayonaras? I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need that. Maybe an Elish Norn? Give some minus two, minus two across the board? Ah, uh, no, that's a... Um, that's a land. Well, good game, opponent. I enjoyed your Nissa Shadowed Bows. Assassin's Trophy. Rather basic. Boom. I lose two life. And it's time for the lethal swing. Well, wait. Okay, it's time for Vorinclex and then the lethal swing. Wait, maybe they want to activate Vorinclex first? It's time for the lethal swing. Good game, Nissa. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. As always, if you'd like to watch me record these live and play lots and lots of draft, you should come over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian where I play magic pretty much every single day. This deck, by the way, was actually chosen through a poll on my channel. So if you ever want to help choose the next Brawl Star, I take suggestions and then I put them in a big bin and unless there's something I really want to build myself, I let the chat decide who we build. So they chose Drana and Linvala. And oh, what a blast of a deck it was. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a brutal day.